In today's video, is competing a good idea with Nicole Ferrier? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Nicole Ferrier of Nicole Ferrier Fitness. How are you, Nicole? I'm doing good. What's up, guys? So, Nicole also has a YouTube channel, which I'll link below, um, where she talks about all this stuff. So, go watch her, and uh, I'll put her Instagram on the screen here for you. But she's actually a client of mine now for a couple of years, and we're getting ready for one of the biggest shows in the country. Yeah, NPC Universe. Yeah, and we just found out we're on the same flight. So, yeah. we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be heading to New York uh, in a couple of days to compete, or New Jersey. I don't think I actually go to New York. Yeah, it's just Jersey, yeah. Yeah, just Jersey, baby. Um, so, Nicole is a national level bikini competitor, and uh, obviously has delusions of grandeur within the sport. But I thought for today's video, what we would talk about is the idea of kind of looking like a competitor. Yeah. Or the fact that competitors tend to draw people into the fitness world. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you get a lot of inquiries from people that say, say what exactly? Um, your prep inspires me. Like you, your body looks amazing. You look so fit. You look so healthy. Um, I want to inspire to do something like that or compete or I get a lot of like, I want to look like a competitor, but I don't want, don't want to compete. Yeah. And that's something I actually hear all the time is like, I love that look. Can you attain that without competing? And I'll say, in, in my opinion, I'd love to hear your thought on this. With, uh, <laughs> with the exception of the genetically elite, no. Yeah, there. it's very not maintainable at all to look like a competitor. Um, and also, just the look of a competitor is years and years of hard work. Um, genetics play a role, but if you don't have a athletic background, if you're not weight training, odds are you're going to diet down and you're not even going to have the look of a competitor. Um, but the other things that you need to take into account is your physical health. Um, I think it's funny that competitors look fit and healthy, but they're actually not at their strongest and they don't feel the best every single day and they deal with mood swings and all that yeah. fun stuff. So when you see somebody that's like an elite level of conditioning, like a stage lean competitor, that's actually not the picture of health. No. It is the picture of amazing visuals, but uh, you're actually quite healthier months before you get on stage and actually you made a good point you're actually your weakest when you get on stage so why the hell do we do it well because we're crazy people yeah i mean i look at bodybuilding like an art form it's really fun to see how my body can change over time um, and i understand that the look isn't going to be permanent and honestly when i am like super like dry stage condition. I don't even really like to look like that year round because it's not comfortable. Um, sometimes your clothes don't fit. Sometimes you don't feel your best. You're not yeah. sleeping the best. And for me, I do fitness as a part of my life, regardless if I have a show in mind or not. I like counting my macros. I like uh, feeling my body with foods that are in alignment with my goals. Like I, I like to train hard. That doesn't really change regardless if there's a show or not. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Competing is, in my opinion, the best competitors. It's an extension of their life already. Mm -hmm. They're already going to the gym. And in fact, I didn't compete in my first show until I was 32. And the reason I did that was because I was going to the gym so frequently. The people at my gym that competed said, you come to the gym every day. Why not do a show? And that's when I started looking at the idea. Yeah. So I didn't look at competition as a way to kind of inspire myself. It was... It was kind of out of boredom in the gym. I was going to the gym a lot and I didn't really have a, a specific goal other than, hey, I want to look good naked or I want to go to the beach and look like I work out or, yeah. you know, so competing for me was like, ooh, in one year, I'm going to get on stage. Yeah. And when you make that decision, I will say this, my workouts were better. My diet got better. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I said no to like partying and, you know, so yeah. your habits start to change. So if you want to look like a competitor, but you don't want to compete, I would say for, for the average person, you're probably not going to get there. Because no. it would be silly to push yourself as hard as we push ourselves all the time. It's just, unless you are working for like a photo shoot or something like that, that's the only thing that I would recommend to maybe train like a competitor. Again, there's really no need to get to that level of conditioning, nor do you really want to. Um, you might think you want to, but when yeah. you even get there, you don't even think you look like that, which prep <laughs> goggles is a whole nother thing when you are ready for stage and you don't realize that you are. Yeah, that's one of the things I always tell people is take a ton of pictures during prep because I even do this myself. I'll, I'll look at myself in the morning and I'll take an update picture and I'll be like, God, I look terrible. And then a few months later, I'll go back through my phone and be like, what the f what was yeah, the Yeah, you're like, me? I'm bloated. I, I don't look good at all. Yeah. I look back. I, the, the, my favorite one is when people go, I'm flat and I'm depleted, but here's my pictures anyway. And all of us are like, wow, you look amazing. But yeah. that's how your brain sees things when you're that lean. So 
for, for those that are interested in kind of the fit lifestyle, I, what I've seen happen though is people go, well, let, let's start working on it. Let's start mm -hmm. getting into the habits. And then after a, a month or a few years of doing this, then you can actually set some expectations. Yeah. I think that you should make this a part of your lifestyle for, honestly, if you want to compete, you should be doing like consistent in the gym and with your nutrition at least a year. Um, and you know, stop setting like short term goals to like a timeline for me, my competing career. I look at it for like the next 10 years. I don't look at it as just, I want to look like a competitor in 12 weeks. Let's go. Um, right make it a long-term goal if that's something you want to do and do your research go to a show um if you want to compete and then if you don't want to compete going to that show can teach you a lot too yeah and i think if you see competitors in person who are about to compete that can teach yeah. you a lot they look small because everyone says to me like oh i went to the show and i saw all the pro bikini girls walking around they're really skinny i'm like well yeah, yeah with their clothes on they're extremely skinny they're no body fat so yeah. it's it's not a look that you know, sometimes when you see Instagram photos or professional photo shoot photos, yeah. that was specifically timed by depleting, then filling out, then pumping up, then good lighting, and maybe some nice editing, and then you get that look. But it's not maintainable all day long. It's not like we walk around looking as great as those photos are mm -hmm. all day long. We as competitors know how to capture a moment in time and use it for years to come. Um, but understand that there's a lot of self-doubt and criticism that goes into even getting to those days. Yeah, and you as a competitor, you know your best angles. So, And just take it for a grain of salt. What you see on Instagram isn't always what someone looks like. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things when you go to fitness expos and you realize, like, wow, that's actually not what that person looks like yeah. at all. Um, you get catfished. So, <laughs> oh, someone, she got triggered. She got catfished. <laughs> So if you're interested in the look that competitors have, I think that that can be, go with that. Like look into that and go to some shows mm -hmm. um, or get involved in going to the gym a couple days a week and tracking your calories and see how your body changes. Because honestly, I do love competition for many reasons, but I wouldn't suggest people get into it for the wrong reasons because it's, it's very challenging. But I think mm -hmm. for those that go through it, it ends up becoming a part of your life in a positive way. Um, I mean, how many years have you been competing? Four. Four years and before yeah. that she was a gymnast mm -hmm. so she already had a foundation of like strength background and you know was very aware of, of her physique and you know I grew up playing baseball and volleyball and basketball and I, I started lifting weights when I was 17 in high school so yeah you know like for me competing was an extension of my competitive outlet which I'm sure you lost when you know yeah you I went through that gymnastics. whole identity crisis of like what do I do with my time now I don't even yeah. know what to train for yeah. um, and that was me training really hard for two years and I didn't even really know what competing was I just yeah. wanted to work towards something and then when I saw competing I was like wow that would be a great way, great way for me to transition all this hard work into something that looks fun yeah so I think We'll end it there. That's exactly what I would say is, you know, look at competition as something you can do down the road if you're new to training. It can certainly inspire um, some, some changes in your lifestyle and overall approach. Mm -hmm. I would say if I was classifying like bodybuilding competition, overall, it's a very healthy lifestyle. Our, our approach 365 days a year is about looking good on that one day. There are periods of it that are probably a little more challenging and some periods of it that are a little more fun. Mm -hmm. But overall, the people that I see that compete are successful not only on stage, but they're successful in all other areas of life because you do learn some valuable things like time management, how to set a goal and achieve it. You know, you build some self-confidence. Discipline. Discipline. You know, small business owner here as well as a competitor and she's very successful. So, you know, these are, these are lessons that you learn through competition. Um, I think a lot of people look at it like, well, if I can't be Mr. Olympia, then why bother? But that's, that's a very short-sighted goal. Yeah, exactly. And it's about your personal journey and those challenges that you overcome. I mean, that's why I compete every single prep. I learn something new about myself um, and it always resonates in the other areas of my life. It's made me better at time management. It's made me um, prioritize my business more yep. and my time more. Um, it's made me like appreciate little moments too, like going out to dinner and experiences like that. Yep. Um, it just opens your eyes up a lot to just daily life and things that yep. people take advantage of. 
Uh, if you're interested in hearing more about her journey, we actually did a podcast with Redefine Healthy Radio a couple days ago, which is now on the uh, iTunes and SoundCloud and all that stuff. So look up Nicole. I think I called it Bikini Diaries from gymnast to yeah, competitor. Everybody yeah, everybody wants you to continue it too. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll happily do more. I just live in Tampa and Nicole just moved here. So we can obviously do content a lot easier. So that's going to be it for today, guys. If you want to know more about Nicole, links below, listen to the podcast, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. I don't know if I should say bye or not. <laughs>